We're on Daf Kuv Zayin Amud Beis towards the bottom of the Yamad, like six, seven lines from the bottom. Om Ashmuel, Hashayle Dag Menayam. So you pull a fish out of the sea. Kibim Shiyavish Bay Kesela. If this, if the uh, skin of the fish, you see that it's drying up, the size, the measurement of a, of a coin of a sela, chayev, because then you the, the fish is dead. As Rashi over here says, the you chayev for the malach of shaychet, which is the malach of netilas neshama. Amar Rav Yosi Bar Avin Ubein Sampirov. It has to be drying up between the scales of the fish. That's a sign that it's dead. It's not only if it's mamish, if this part of the fish and mamish dried up completely. Even if it becomes slimy, like when you touch the fish, when you take it out of the water in the chathchila, so it's, it's wet, but then it becomes like sticky and slimy in one area, that already shows that it's losing its chayas. And it's yichayi for the malach of Natilis and Shama. Omar, mar, bar, hamduri, omar, shmuel. If a person stuck his hands into the womb of an animal, and you dislodged the, uh, the fetus of the womb of the animal, this is also Yechayev for this, and uh, as we'll see in the Hemshech of the Gemara, Yechayev for the Malacha of Kaitzer, Tailish. You're removing it from its source where it was. My time, uh, what's the Pshat in this? What's the reason for this? But Amdura explained this to me. Lav Omar Rav Sheshis. Didn't Rav Sheshis say, "Hi man, the talosh kishusa mehizmi vehigi." Someone that removes kishusa, it's some kind of a uh, growth that there is on top of thorns. That uh, some some kind of green growth that's on top of them. Mechayev mishum oiker. Yechayev for the malach of oiker of removing something from the source where it grows. Oiker dava megiduloi. Huh? Oiker and Tailish are two different malachas. No, they're the same malacha. Oiker dava megiduloi. He's using the term oiker because it's not really Tailish, which is a term used when you uproot something from the ground. So oiker dava megiduloi, this greenery that the, that there is on top of these thorns, you're removing it from its source. So even though it's not something that takes nourishment from the ground, the malacha of Tailish is shayach here. The same thing also with removing a fetus from its source in the womb. You also chayef for removing it from its source where it grows. Amar Abayas and a similar halacha Abayas said, "Hayman the talash pitre meuna de chatzva." Somebody that's um, removing the pitre, which is some kind of a. Um, uh, what? I think no, it's, 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 it's not. It's, it, pitra is like mushrooms, but it refers to a uh, new fungus, some kind of a fungus that grows on, the, on barrels or on handles of barrels. If you leave it there in moisture for a long time, that is green fungus or whatever it is grows in it. You're also removing something from the place where it naturally was growing. Algae. Algae. That's what it is. Okay, something like that. Most of Ravashi, so Ravashi asks a question, Ravashi, sorry, Hatailish Ma'atzitz Nakov, we learned this before, somebody that is uprooting from a flower pot that has this perforated Chayev, because then it receives nourishment from the ground. Visha'ain in Nakov, but it's a flower pot that's not perforated, Potter. So you see that you only Chayev if you're uprooting it from the ground. And for the Gemara, Hossam, that case is different. Lav, Hainu, Ravise, this is not the way it's supposed to be growing. When you plant something in a flower pot, it's, it's, flower pots usually have holes in it to get nourishment from the ground. So therefore, if it doesn't, it's, you, you, put, you just take a, a pot that has no holes in it and you plant in it. That's not the regular way that, that you plant. And therefore, you're not chai for that. Ha ha, hainu revisi. All the cases we were talking about over here, whether the fetus in the womb, whether the, uh, the, the pitre, mona, the chatzva, all these cases, that's the chatchila where it grows naturally and you're removing it from its natural source of growth. And therefore, it is the Malach of Tailish. Going back to the Mishnah. It said in the Mishnah, Chaya, in the beginning of the Pedic, a Chaya and a Oif, that's in your possession, that uh, if you Chayvel, if you uh, cause a bruise, you Chayev. You could use uh, a Oif. You can use the hide, the skin of a, of a bird to write Tfilin on it. Oif Tahir has to be a Tahir the Gebert. So the Gemara says as follows, Amr Rav Yasef, my Kamash Malam. What is Rav Huna teaching me that you could write tefillin on the skin of a bird? The Islay Oyr, he's telling us that it has a thick enough of a skin that you could write on it for the for tefillin. Tanina, we can see that it has a thick skin from the Mishnah. Because it says, if you bruise them, 
Chayiv. So you chayiv when you bruise a bird. So as we learned yesterday, the only time the skin of an of a animal, of a bird, will, it will create a bruise is if it's thick enough that the blood under the skin collects there and remains stuck there and changes the color. If it's very thin, soft skin, it won't do that, Bechlal. So we see from the Mishnah that says, Achayiv ben Chayiv, that it has a thick skin that could, that could also be used to write for, say, for, 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 for tefillin. So what's his Chiddush? Amalei Abaye, so Abaye explained, Tuvu Kamash Mulam. Rav Huna is teaching me a big Chiddush. The Imam Asnisan, if it was just a Mishnah, Hava Amin, I would say, Kivin the Ispe Nikvi Nikvi, since the skin of a bird has little holes in it, Loi, it can't be used to write a Tefillin on it, because the ink is going above a place where it has holes. Kamash Mulam, that's the Chiddush over here, that even though it has these little holes, it still could be used. Kida Amri Bimarave, as it was said in Eretz Yisrael, Kol Nekev Shadiyoy Oiveres Olov, any hole that's small enough that the ink goes above it and it doesn't come through, ain't a Nekev. That's not, that doesn't count as a hole and uh, it's, it's a kosher, it's kosher tefillin. Okay, so that was his Chiddush here. Meis for Rabzeire, Rabzeire asked the question, there's a drosh in the Braise that says as follows, Bechnofov. This is a pasuk in the in Parshas Vayikra, where it talks about the oil as oif, as Rashi brings there. You bring a carbon from an oif, and one of the things it says over there in the Torah is when you, you, you the bird, the, the body of this bird is supposed to be split into half, and you bring it, you makriv it on the mizbeach bechnafov with its uh, wings, with its with the skin. As the Gemara will now say, you makriv it all on the mizbeach bechnafov is marbel hachsher es oil. <coughs> To say that even the oil, even the skin, together with the kanaf, with the wings, is brought on the mizbeach. Now, if you're going to say that the skin is hard, it's not part of the basar, it's not soft like the basar itself. It's, it's hard, a hard surface, like a hide, and you can write on a tefillin, as we just said. How, how are we saying that this is brought on the mizbeach together with the flesh of the, of the bird that you makrev on the mizbeach? Right, the, the assumption of the Gemara at this point is the Akrav on the Mizbeach is always with the Chelev, with the Basar, but, and the Knof of the wings, but not the actual Oir, uh, which is hard. No, it is a hard skin, and therefore you could write Tefillin on it. That's the whole Chiddush here. The Chiddush of the Pasuk when it says Bich Knof of is split the bird into two and bring it on the Mizbeach along with the skin, not like the animals when, you, when they're makrav, they have to be mafshit the oil, they remove the skin and then they uh, are makrav on the Mizbeach. That's the Chiddush, the bird is different, you take the whole body on them and split it and bring it on the Mizbeach. Ikid Amri, others said the same point that we're learning here now, but in a different version. Amr Abzeire, Abzeire said, Afanan Nami Tanina. We could actually bring a raya from this b'raise that the skin is a thick skin of the bird. The, skirt, the skin of the bird is thick. B'chnafov l'rabais esa'er. B'chnafov, the pasta comes to add, to be mechadish, that you take the whole wing as is, it's split into two, and you bring it on the mezbeach. So, i amrit b'shleime oir hu if, you're going to say that it's haka, thick skin, hainu de itzrich kro l'rabuye. That's why you need the special pasta to be marbe, to tell me that you don't remove the skin like by an animal, but you take it fully and bring it on the mezbeach. Eli Yomret, Lav Oiru, but if you're going to tell me that it's not really, there's no hide to remove, it's just a, it's a very thin, soft uh, uh, oil that can't be removed. Why would you need a Pasuk to be Marbe that you bring it on the Mizbech along with the skin? So Abaya says, no, it is possible to say that this skin is not a thick skin. And I need the Taita to tell me that the skin is brought in the Mizbech as well. I, th- I would think, even the Izbe, Pirzi, Pirzi, since the skin has cracks in it, it's not even, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a smooth skin on the, uh, on the body of the bird. So I would think mois, it's repugnant, and therefore it should be removed before you bring the bird and makriv it on the mezbeach. Kamash and that's the chiddush of the teira, that you bring it along with the skin. In other words, when it has those cracks, what happens to the skin? The skin is sort of dry. It's not thin. I'm sorry, it's not, it's not a thick skin take, but because it has these cracks in it, so it's dry. So therefore it's, it's repugnant, it's not something that should be brought in the Mizbeach. Komash Malon, so the Chiddush here is that even though it uh, has cracks in it, it's brought in the Mizbeach. The conclusion remains the same, that 
you can use the air of a chicken, of what, what, not of a chicken, but of a, of a, of a, of a, of a bird for a uh, tefillin, to write tefillin on it. So the Gemara now is going to talk about another case of using the uh, for tefillin. Boy, my name is Bereid Ravina, my name is Nachman by Yitzchak. Ma'al lichtoif tefillin al gabi oir shal dok toher. How about using the skin of a fish, of a of a uh, kosher fish to write tefillin on it? Amale. So he answers. Rav Nachman of Yitzchak answers. Im yovi el yovi yoyma. If if a liyah a novi is going to come and he's going to tell us, then we'll know what the halacha is. My frekte gemara, my im yovi el yovi yoyma. What's the pshat if a liyah a novi is going to come and tell us? Rashi explains the pshat of the gemara's question is that we know teira leiba shemaimi. We can't trust the Nevu of Eliyahu and Navi to come and tell us a halacha. So what, was, what, what is he saying that we're going to rely on Eliyahu and Navi? So now if you're going to say the pshar here is, Ide is le'er, Ide less le'er. Eliyahu and Navi will determine, is the skin of the fish thick enough to be able to write tefillin on it? Or it's, or it's too thin, you can't write tefillin on it. It's not like fake. <coughs> huh? It's not the same idea. Oh, one second, one second. the is le'er. We don't need a Leo and Navi to determine the thickness of the skin of a fish. We can see, feel it. Is it thick enough? Could you write on it or not? That's one question. So what, what's the pshat? Okay, one second. First, let me finish the two dots and I'll go back. V'oid, another question here is, Hatnan, we learned in a Mishnah, Atzmois, Hadog, the bones of a fish, and the, and the skin of a fish, Matzilin, Ba'oyal Ames. If you have a vessel that's made of this material, whether of the, of the bones of a fish or of the hide of it, the skin of a fish, and there's something inside a keli, so we had already a few times before that in a Oyal Ames, if something is contained and closed inside a keli, sealed inside a keli, it's not doesn't receive the tumor, so it says that it's thick enough. It could be used that it, it it's matzal by alamais. So we see that it is thick skin. Elo. So the pshat of here is im yovi eliyovi yoymar. What we need eliyov and navi to come and tell us is ipaska zuamemine iloy paska zuamemine. The stench from the from the fish is it is it gone after you capture the fish and you have that? Is it gone or not? That's what we need eliyov and navi to tell us. So the, so the Rishenim asked the question, and this you can't figure out on your own? To feel the thickness of the skin, that you can figure out on your own. But to feel if it still has a stench, that we, we, we lost a sense of smell. So Shainach Corona, what's his, uh, <laughs> what do you need the Leon now before? So the, the, the Ran over here says, the Gemara is not to, talking about a Zuoma Begashmi. It's talking about the Zuoma that it speaks about, the Zuoma that came through the Chet Eitzadas, or after the Chet Egel, that you are the Zuoma Lailam. That's the Zuoma that the Gemara is talking about over here. I'm not telling you a Pshat from a Pesach Siddush Sefer. It says this in, in the Chidush Ran over here. For some reason, yes, this Zuoma got attached to the fish more than the Behemoth. <laughs> yeah. Even though in Chassidus it says that fish are on a higher level usually. They weren't affected. Okay. No, whatever it is. It's some, for some reason there's a zoom on the fish. They don't have a higher, but I guess they have a bad smell. So there's an interesting thing about this Gemara that Rebbe spoke about it a few times and was the Shem she brought up in the Geet to Teku that even though it says that Eliyo Novi cannot pask in Alochis and even lost at Love, Teire Leib Shemaimi, but when you talk about something which is just to clarify a fact, it's not about determining a halacha. Do we paskin like him? Do we paskin like him? How do we dash an apostolic? It's pasha to determine a fact. That we could rely on a nevu of Eliyahu and Avi. Taira leib shamaimi is going to get to clarifying a halacha. And over here you see it in the Lashon of the Gemara. Because the Gemara asks, you can't rely on Eliyahu and Avi. And right away the Gemara says, Elamai, what are you going to say? You want to rely on Eliyahu and Avi for the facts. To determine the thickness of the skin. Or for the facts to know whether the zuama is here or not. And the same thing is when you get to Teku, I don't know if every time the Gemara says Teku, it's a Suffolk and Matthias. But that's the answer to many of the pe- cases where there is a Teku, it's because the Shadish of the Suffolk is not about how to darshan a Pasik, it's not about a Machlek, it's about a Poshet and Matthias. In, mo- in many, even the Teku, Dine Mominus, when you have Teku, the Shaila is the Matthias of did he borrow the money, did he not borrow the money, did he give back, we Poshet can't determine what happened over here. It's not really a Machlek, it's when you get to a Din. Uh, that example, correct. That's, that's, that's the Pashat the You have to determine what, what happened here. Yeah, but there's other answers to this. But here in the Gemara, that's, uh, the Rebbe spoke about this also on a few, few occasions about the Sinyan. Okay, Dr. Gemara Vaita, very interesting story here. Shmuel the Karna. Shmuel and Karna have a Yasvi, a Gudu, the Nor, Malka. They were sitting at the bank of the river, Nor Malka. Karna is a person. Yeah. Chazinu yeah. Lemaya, they saw the water, the Kodalu that was right, the waves of the water were rising up. 
Vahiri, and the water was also dirty. Amalei Shmuel Lekarna, so Shmuel says to Karna, you know what's happening? And the Masha says they basically saw the stream, the flow of the water, it was going in the opposite direction. The nature of the water was, and we had this once before in the Gemara, there, there was a river that flowed from Eretz Yisrael down to Babel. There was a stream that flowed downward, and they saw the waves rising up and going opposite the, the regular stream. So Shmuel says to Karna, you know what's happening? Gavre Rabba Kasi Mimarova. There's a great person arriving now from Eretz Yisrael on a boat. And he has stomach issues, and he has to relieve himself. The Kadali, and he's relieving himself at, at the at the at the um, on the boat. The Kadalu Maya and the water, the waves of the water rose up, Lakbuli Ape to receive him. Or Rashi actually explains Lakbuli Ape means to create this wall around him, the separation around him, in order to, to, for him to be able to relieve himself tzniyistik. That's the pshat of what happened over here. So these waters rose up for, for this great person that's coming, and he relieved himself. So because of this, it caused big waves in the, in the sea, and also the water was dirty. That's what they saw. Interesting. So who was this person that was coming? Uh, who's, uh, so we'll see right over here, the Gemara will tell us. Um, Zil, so Shmuel tells Karna, Zil tohile akankane, go smell the barrel. In other words, like Rashi says, Amal, when you want to see wine, if it's good wine or not, so you go, you smell the wine to see if it's sour, if it's good. Right, so he tells him, go, go see this person, what he is. Ozal, they went, Ashkechele Rav, they saw who was coming from Eretz Yisrael, Rav, L'Chadchile was learning in Eretz Yisrael by Rabbeinu HaKadosh, and Rav came down to Bavel. So he came, he arrived to Bavel, so he wanted to find out what's the story with him. Omale, Sakarna approaches Rav and tells him, Minayin she'ein kaisven tefillin, elo gabi er How do you know that you don't write tefillin only in the hide of a kosher animal? Because the Pasik says, Laman ti etteris Hashem beficha. In the parish of Tulin, it says that the tater of the Abishir will be in your mouth. So we dash from this, Minamutter beficha. You can only write it on something which is mutter to eat in your mouth. Minayin with damshu adaim. How do I know the stain of blood? This is Minigay to Hilchas Nida. By the stain of blood, that it's only tome if it has a reddish, if it has a reddish color to it. They were afraid of the water. The blood that's red, like, like uh, the water was red like blood. So, uh, how, 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 is that, how is that connected? Mm -hmm. He asked him unrelated halachas. He's testing him. No, so no, he I'm saying, how is that also connected to Damnida? It's not. I mean, Luchayda, I'm thinking to myself, to, to, to prove that blood is red, you don't need a raya for it. But for some reason, the Gemara is bringing a raya from an unrelated I mean, Pasuk. I mean, the Gemara could have simply... Is there anywhere in Taita where it oh. clearly says that blood is red? Oh, I don't oh, think okay. so. Well, it's, it's red as most any other color. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's all kinds color. of shades of colors, and all, the only shade of the color that's, that's Tomei is because it says clearly in the Pasuk, Adumim Kadam. I guess this is a Pasuk. I don't know if there's any other Pasuk in Tanakh where it says that blood is red. How do we know that the, the mitzvah of bris mila is in that place that we do the mitzvah? Nemakan or losoi, because when the Torah describes the mila, it says or losoi. halon, and it also says by the iser of arlo on fruit trees. It says the term, same term or losoi. halon just like the iser of arlo by fruit trees is a fruit tree that grows fruits. Afkan dova Over here as well, the mitzvah of bris mila is to be done in the aver that multiplies, that, that, that gives birth. Amen. So the Gemara asks a question, or maybe this is what Karna asked Rav. Eime Liboy, I have another source for you. Maybe we should say that the bris has to be done on the heart. Not exactly sure how that would be done. Sounds like an open heart surgery. V'chsev, umaltem es arla slovavchem. A pefedish apasik in Teire. You don't even need any gzedish over here. It says umaltem es arla slovavchem. Eime oznoi, or maybe the mitzvah of bris mila should be done in the ear. V'chsev, hine areila oznom. That their ears are, are uh, farshtop, that they, they're, not, they're not listening with their ears. So maybe it should be done there. 
So the Gemara answers no. When we make the Gzeda Shave, by the Taita it says by Bris or Lasai, Donin or Lasai Tama me or Lasai Tama. The exact same word, the full word of our Lasai that it says by a Bris, it says by the fruit tree. That's what we learn out from each other. But the ain donin or lasai tama, the full word of our lasai, mi ar las, from the word ar las that it says by ar las levafchem, or arei la oznam, she'ena tama. It's not the exact full word that it says by abris. Amalei, so now Rav says to him, my shemecha, what is your name? Karna, he says, my name is Karna. Amalei, so Rav tells him, so Rav was a sharp fellow, as you see here. Yehei Rava, should be the will of the Ebishter, the typically Karna Be'ena, that you should grow horns out of your eyes. As Rashi explains, Ra, he, Rav understood what's going on. He just arrives into Babel and they're testing him. They're testing him. He wasn't, he wasn't impressed by the fact that they were testing him to see if he knows Taita or not. So this is what he told him. Okay, what happened eventually here? The story's not over. L'saif Aile Shmuel Lebeise. Shmuel brought him into his home. Shmuel invited Rav into his home. Uh, and what did he do? He gave him to eat bread made from barley and fish, some kind of a kisse de harsana, which is brought in the Gemara many times, some kind of a small fish. And and he also gave him beer. This all causes, causes a lot of stomach issues over here. This, and he didn't show him a place where he could relieve himself. Why? Why was he doing this? in order that he should have diarrhea. So as Rashi explains, he gave him to eat this food to soften up his stomach, and then he shouldn't use the bathroom immediately, and then that will cause his stomach to, to be very soft and diarrhea, and then when he'll eventually go to use the, to relieve himself, he'll be able to empty his stomach completely. And the Masha here says that Shmuel was a doctor, and Shmuel knew when Rav was coming, and he, he, he saw the waves, and he saw the water was dirty, so he knew that Rav had stomach issues. He wanted to help him. He wanted to help him to be able to relieve himself from his stomach pain. So this is what he it did. It was a laxative of some sort. So, yeah, exactly. So what happens? Layet Rav. Rav cursed Shmuel because he didn't realize that he was doing it for, for, the, for a good reason. So he cursed Shmuel. And he said, Man de mitzaron. Whoever caused me pain, bani, should not give birth to children. And this is what ended up happening. As Rashi says, Rashi says it, or the Mepharshim say it. No, the Mepharshim say it. The Drav only had daughters, no sons. Because of this, Shmuel, that is. Sorry, Shmuel only had daughters, not sons. Yeah, that's the conclusion of the story. But I'm sure there's deeper explanations to the story. I looked in the Masha, the Masha doesn't say much else other than the fact that Shmuel meant well. Shmuel was a doctor and he really was trying to help out Rav. Yeah, and Rashi also. Rashi says it also. Oh, okay, okay. We say this. I missed the Rashi. The Rashi also says it's very good. I swear to have a Shmuel constantly fighting now. This is the beginning. The beginning. <laughs> this is what happened to Kainal. I guess we never hear about him again. Yeah. Uh, well, it's brought up in the Gemara. Not so often, but it's brought up. Going back to one of the details that was mentioned before, to the place of the bris mila. So it's a machlekes tanoi and where we learn this out from. How do we know that the mila is in that place? That we had before in the Gemara. Rab Nasan Aimer, Rab Nasan says not as another drasha. Ain't it tzaruch? I don't need this gzeir shava. Harei Aimer v'orel zachar asher lo yimel es besar or losay. So when the Torah describes the mitzvah of the bris, it says orel zachar. So from here we learn makim shenikeh ben zacharus lo nakfus. That place in the body where you see the difference between a male and female. So you don't need any gzeir shava. Going back to what we had before about writing a tefillin on the hide of animals. Tan Rabbanon, Kaisvin tefillin, Al Gabi Oir Behemet Taira, you write tefillin on the hide of a kosher animal, Val Gabi Oir Chaya Taira, on the hide of a kosher Chaya, Val Gabi Oir Nevelis Atrefis Shalahan. You could also write it even if it was, there was no kosher Shchita, if it, uh, it's a Nevela. Or a treife, you could write it on that as well. It doesn't have to be davka kosher shchita. When a kroch is besaron, and you can use the hairs of these animals to wrap the parshas of the tefillin. The parshas of the tefillin are supposed to be wrapped in the hairs of the animal. When it tefar is begidon, and you sew the bottom of the tefillin closed with the sinews of these animals. This is a halach l'moishem We learned about this once before, I believe. Yeah, that the tefillin have to be wrapped in the hairs of the animal when it's far as and that it's sewed closed with the sinews. 
Aval, ein kaisvin loyal gaba erbe hemitmeya, you can't write it on the height of a non kosher animal, loyal gaba er chayitmeya, chayat that's non kosher. The ain't sarach loymar al gaba er nevela o trefeshalahen. Definitely not on the dead carcass that it wasn't shechted bechlal of the not kosher animals. The ain't a krochen besaron, you can't wrap it with their hairs, the ain't a tvaris begidon, and you can't sew it with their sinews. This, regarding this subject, this was a question that Rabbi Saisi, some uh, Picaitis or whatever, asked Rabbi Shua Hagarsi as follows. From where do you know that you don't write tefillin on the hide of an animal that's not kosher? The chsev, as we brought before the source, the pasik, You only write the tefillin on something that it's mutter for you to eat. So if so, Elamiata al Gabi Erna Velas a Trefis Al you can say. So his question was, so what if it's a kosher animal but it wasn't a kosher shita, so you can't eat that either? So how could you write on it? Amalei, so Rabbi Yeshua answered him, Emshul Hamashal Ma Davidim. I'll give you the following marshal. Shnei bin Ayodam Shin Shaivu Ariga Lamalchus. Two people that were liable, punishable for death to be executed by the king. Echad Hargai Melech. One of them, the king himself executed. The Echad Hargai Ispakliter. And the other one, the person that's designated for this, the Ispakliter that does it, he's the one that executed him. Ezeman Meshubach. Ah, execution. Ezeman Meshubach. Who's, who's on a uh, higher status? Havayim is Esha Hargai Melech, the one that the king himself is the one that killed him. He's on a higher status. So, what was he using this as a marshal? The one that you shechted. So a human being killed this animal. The one that died on its own, that's a novella, the, the Abisha killed this animal. So that's even better. That's more fit to be used for the tefillin. Tresante mashal, huh? The mashal over here says that this whole mashal was stam as an answer to this apikaitis, but this is not really the reason. The real reason is, let's just finish the Gemara. Elamata yoichlu. So if you're saying that without shechita, it's even better. The Abishu is the one that kills it, so then it's, 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 you should be even fit for eating. Amalei, so he says to him, no, how, are you, how are you using a mashal for that? Hatayra amra leseichlu kol nevela. The Taylor tayra clearly says that you shouldn't eat it in a vela. Vatamrit yoichlu. And you're saying that it should be eaten. Amalei kalos. Okay, good kezok. This is well said. This is... True, it's, it's, uh, that, that's totally us, sir. So the Masha says, even this marshal that he brought him, Benigaya, to uh, Tefillin, that's not the real reason. The real reason is Pashat, that even though Taket's an Avela, but it's a Min, which is Kosher. Mutter Beficha means it has to come from a Min that's Kosher, and that doesn't have to actually be Mutter Beficha. But he was just giving him this marshal to, to give him a Psahezba for the Sinia, but that's not the reason. Yeah. Taisus here says it also. Yes, yeah, it's Masha. Taisus here says it. So therefore, the marshal is Lav Davke. So up to Mishnah. Ein Eisen Hilmi B'Shabbos. You're not allowed to make Hilmi B'Shabbos, which is some kind of a brine, which is made with wa- water and salt, to, uh, and maybe some other ingredients also, but bake is salt and water. You're not allowed to make this on Shabbos. Why not allowed to make this on Shabbos? So there's a few reasons. Either because it's it's Ovdin Dechayel, Ovdin Dechayel, it's, 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 it's a mundane activity for the weekdays, that you're preparing the, the, the food this way. Or the reason is because when you make a lot of it, as we'll see soon in the Gemara, there's a difference if you make a lot of it or a little bit of it. So then it looks like you're preparing it for the week, not just for Shabbos. You're allowed to make salt water. And you could dip your bread into this salt water. And you can use it for ingredients to put it into your food. Rabbi Yaisi says on this, Hilmi, Hilmi, it's the same Hilmi, it's the same brine, it's the same mixture of salt and water that you're making, whether you're making a lot, whether you're making a little, what's the difference? Okay, well, the, well, the Gemara will explain more what's going on over here in the Mishnah. When is it allowed to make, how is it allowed to make the salt water? If you first put oil into the water, so then you're not making it the way, the way you usually do it. When you, once you put oil inside, the, or the water and the salt does not mix properly, so therefore it's not, uh, that's allowed. Or instead of putting, Instead of putting the water first, um, again. Mm. Well, you pour the water and the salt. So right. The salt. Instead of putting the water first, you put the salt first. And then it's not the regular way, so then it's allowed. That we do Pesach. That's exactly what we do when Pesach falls out on Shabbos. If you forgot to make the salt water before. They just pour the water. You put the oil into the water. Correct. That's one option. Or into the salt. 
into the salt. Or you just pour mm. and put the salt no. in first. I don't think so. Nice and shamel lechatchil atecha mayim, or you put the oil into the salt. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. It was fast. Let's see. Okay, let's see in the Gemara. So the Gemara, Mike Omar, what's the pshat in the Tanakama of the Mishnah? Right, the Tanakama of the Mishnah starts saying, "You're not allowed to make hilmi." Hilmi is basically salt water. And then he says, but you could make mei melach and you could, you could dip your bread inside. So what is he saying? Om Rav Yehuda, so the pshat in the Tanakhama is, Om Ashmul hachik Omar. Ein oisen mei melach merubin. Hilmi is when you make a lot of it. A lot of the salt water. That's not allowed. Aval oisu mei melach muatin. But you are allowed to make a small amount that you're just using to dip your bread inside. That was, that was the Tanakhama's shita. So now, based on this, we'll understand also Rabbi Yaisi. So Rabbi Yaisi, when he said, what's the difference if it's a lot or a little? That's what Rabbi Yaisi was telling the Tanakhama. Mainaf kimina, it's always Asar. So, if I tell the Gemara, it says, Om Rabbi Yaisi, va'aloi hu hilmi beim rubim beim muatin. Iboyo lo Rabbi Yaisi, so Rabbi Yaisi asks the question, Lesoir o lahater. When Rabbi Yaisi came, Rabbi Yaisi just asks a question. He doesn't, he doesn't say, though, what his opinion is. When Rabbi Yaisi asked this question, was he coming to say that both, whether it's a lot or a little, should be Asr? Or was he coming to say both, whether it's a lot or a little, should be Mutter? Am Rabbi Yehuda Lahater. He's coming to be lenient and say that it's Mutter. Why? If he was coming to say a Chumre, it should have clearly said that Rabbi Yaisi is coming to say that it's Asr. Amalei Rabbe, so Rabbe says, no punkt verkehrt, midiktani seife, it says afterwards, ve'eluhein mei melech hamutarin, this is how it's allowed to make the salt water, meklal da Rabbi Yaisi lesser, so that, that shows that what we said right before that was that it's oser, and that's what the Mishnah is telling me, how it would be mutter. Elo Amalei Rabbe lesser, Rabbi Yaisi came to say that whether you make a lot or a little, it's oser to make the salt water. Rabbi Yechanan also said he came to Aser. And then Tanya Nami Yachi, we learned this clearly in Hebraisa. You're not allowed to make a lot of salt water in order to put kvoshin, which is basically like uh, pickles that you want to uh, pickle inside this salt water, which is inside this vessel that's used for this. You're allowed to make a little bit of salt water to dip your bread in it. To use it in, in, uh, in, uh, as ingredients in your, what you're cooking. So here you see clearly the point of not being allowed to make a lot of salt water is because then you're using it for the whole week to pickle in it. And that's not allowed to be made on Shabbos. Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yaisi argues and says, If it's a lot or a little, it makes a difference if it would be forbidden or allowed. Yaimru people say, according to this, Malacha meruba asura. If you do a malacha and it's a larger amount, it's asur. Malacha mu etes muteres. If you do a malacha and it's smaller, it's going to be mutter. Just like when you get to Shabbos bechlal, there's no difference between a lot or a little as long as it has the minimum shear over here as well. Ela elu veilu asur and hey, and it's always asur. The elu hey mei melacha mutaren, and then the Mishnah goes afterwards and says that this is the mei melach that's mutter. Noisin shemenu melach. This is, uh, so the Bryce says a similar thing. You put the, salt, the oil and, 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 the, and the salt, oi, shemen umayim, or oil and water, together first, and then you add the salt. Obulvat shaloyitin mayim umelach lechatchila. You're not allowed to lechatchila mix the, oil, the, wa- the water and the uh, salt without putting the oil first. Yeah. Okay. Now the Gemara goes to the next, uh, another Indian over here, also about this Mei Melech. Hale and the Gemara gives a simon. Huh? Hilmi what? Yeah. Okay. Izin, Tznoin, Esrik, Simen. Toner of Yudeba Chavive. Ein Oisen Mei Melech. Uh, azin, azin is the word. Ain oisin me melach azin. You don't make very strong salt water. My mel melach azin. What does it mean? Very strong salt water. Rabbi Rav Yisro bar bar Abba Damri Tarvayu Kol Shehi Vitza Habitza Habitza. That is sorry. Tzafo behen. Any time an egg will float on top of the water, so it's thick enough that the, the, the egg doesn't sink, that's thick salt water. Kama, kama, how much salt is it? Omer Abaye, tre tilsi milche, two-thirds salt, tilsi maya, and one-third water. Lamaya avdila, and what is it made for? Why, when do you make such thick salt water? Omer Abavo, limur yaisa. It's made for some kind of a brine that's used with fish, as Rashi says. Tani Rav Yudeba Chavive, ein, moilchen, snoin, ubeitze, b'shabes, you're not allowed to salt, 
the uh, radishes or eggs on Shabbos in order to sort of preserve it. To salt radishes, you're not allowed, but obey some materis. But to salt an egg, you are allowed. Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman said, Meresha have a malachna pugla. In the beginning, I would salt radishes on Shabbos. Amine, and I said, Afsudikum afsidnale. I'm not preserving it. I'm, it's, it's, it ruins it. Doesn't, I'm, not, I'm not doing any malacha on Shabbos of, to preserve it. Domashmul, pugla chorfi. The pugla is a sharp, the radish is sharp. Miley, and that, that's when it tastes good. And um, when I salt it, I take away from that sharpness and therefore it ruins it. It doesn't preserve it. But then, Kivan the Shemayin Elaha, and then I heard this, the Chiyasa Ula. Ula came from Eretz Yisrael, and he said, Bimarava Malchi Kishri Kishri. In Eretz Yisrael, they salt bundles and bundles of these radishes to preserve it. So I see that salting it is beneficial for it. Mimlach Le Malachna, so I stopped salting it on Shabbos. Tavuli mitavilna. But I, I would use salt to just dip the radishes into salt, but not to salt it strong enough to just preserve it. That you're not allowed on Shabbos. Tani Rav Yehuda Bar Chaviva. The next thing about this is Esrig, Tznayin, Ubeitza. All these three, the esrig, the radish, and the egg. If not for the outside shell, it's something that would, it would never come out. When a person relieves himself, it would never come out of the body. It gets absorbed in the body. Now, the, when it says over here, beitza, it's not talking about the actual shell. Right? It's talking, as Rashi here says, we're talking about the chelbain, the white of the egg. The white, if a person eats the yolk, the yolk gets absorbed in the body very, very well. It's the only the white that, uh, that uh, doesn't. <coughs> the chalbin, that's what Rashi says. Okay. The, uh, the esrig, no, that refers to the skin of the esrig, the outer... The I don't know if you have to eat it. I don't know. Ki aser avdimi omar, me oilam, now another thing about salt water. So he said as follows, me oilam leitova gavre beyama desdaim. A person never drowned in the Yama Dizdayim, which is the, the, the Yama Melach. Because the person always floats on top. Amr Rav Yosef, so Rav Yosef said, Hafucha Zdayim, Hazdayim is a city that was turned over, and Vafucha Milo, and the words that you're saying are, are upside down. He, said he, doesn't, he didn't agree to what he was saying. Why? Gavrud Leitava. A person won't uh, f- uh, uh, sink there. Kshure tova, but a board of wood will sink there. Why are you saying dafka a person? Nothing sinks there. Amle abaya, no, loy mi boye kama. He was saying a chiddish. Loy mi boye kshura. Needless to say, a board of wood. Afila bochal meim shabayilam le tova. You put a, a raft, a board, board of wood on top of the water, it won't sink. El afila gavra de tova bochal meim shabayilam. A person does sink in other in, uh, waters. Biyama des daim le tova. In the water of this daim, he won't sink. Lamay nafke mina. What's, what's the nafkamin of this? Kiha the Ravin have a shakal of Azla Khir the Rab the Rab Yirmiya Aguda the Yama the Zdaim Ravin was walking behind the Rab Yirmiya by the bank of the water of the Zdaim. Amale Mao Lemimshi Mahani Maya Bishabis. Could I wash my face from this water on Shabbos? It's salt water, thick salt water. Could I wash my face from this on Shabbos? Amalei Shapir Domi. Yes, you're allowed. And the question was, what's what was his question? So we already had come of, uh, sometimes before in the Gemara when you get to Rufu on Shabbos. You're using this thing to heal yourself on Shabbos and Rufu on Shabbos is also because you might come to grind herbs to make the medicine. So he told them it's allowed. Lemeimatz, how about Lemeimatz a Lemiftach? To close open, so after I put this water on my face, to rinse off my face, I close and open my eyes. Right, so he wants the water to enter into his eyes as a healing. Amalei, <laughs> so he answered him, Zulay Shemaiti. This I didn't hear, but Kayaitse Bashamaiti, I heard something similar. Dom Rabzaida, Rabzaida said, Zimnu Namale Mishmeda Rav Masna. Sometimes he said in the name of Rab Nasna, Vizimnu Namale Mishmeda Mar Ukva, and sometimes in the name of Mar Ukva, Vitavai Mishmeda Avu the Shmuel. Levi Amrin, and both were said in the name of the father of Shmuel and the name of Levi. And Chadama, that one of them, we don't know who, but one of either Avu the Shmuel or Levi, one of them said, Yayin betoycha ayin aser. To put wine into your eyes for a refuah, for the purpose of healing yourself, is forbidden. Al gava ayin, outside, on top of the eye, eyes is mutter. That's allowed. V'chad Omar, another one of these two, between Avu the Shmuel and Levi, said, Reik tofel, the saliva of a person that's in his mouth, the first thing in the morning, 
When a person, that's what Tafel means, the fresh, raw saliva, first thing in the morning, has um, a healing uh, ability in it. Even to put it on top of your eyes when you wake up is also Asa. Oh, so, we, so we see a similar thing over here, when you get to, to uh, the Mayim of this Daim, the salt water, when you get to your eyes, that you're not allowed to put it inside your eyes. So the Gemara now says, "Tistayim da'avu the Shmuel who da'ama yaim etoychayin aser." We could bring a riot to the fact that it's the father of Shmuel, the one that says that you're not allowed to put the wine into your eyes on Shabbos. And al gava ayim mutter on top of the eyes it's mutter. But da'ama Shmuel because Shmuel said, "Shayda adam pite biyayin." A person is allowed to soak his bread in water or dip his bread into into wine. That is, the nice al gava ayim b'Shabbos, and you could put it on top of your eyes on Shabbos. So he says only on top of your eyes, not into your eyes. The Shamile Miman. This is what Shmuel said. Who did Shmuel hear this fun from? Lav the Shmile Mavua. He heard it from his father. So we see that the father of Shmuel is the one that said, Don't put the wine into your eyes, you can put it on top of your eyes. Well, the time makes, according to your reasoning, so Shmuel also said about the saliva. Shmuel said, Reik Tafel, the saliva. Afil al Gabiya Ay and Asi, even on top of the eyes, it's also forbidden. The Shmile Miman, who did he hear this from also? He heard Elaim with the Shmile Mavua. So if he heard it from his father, so then Ela Levi So Levi didn't say anything. We said before one of these statements Levi said, but now you're saying that Shmuel heard both of these things from his father. Ela One of these things Shmuel heard from his father. And another one he heard from Levi. And we don't know which one he heard from his father and which one he heard from Levi. Okay. Stop it. Yeah, it's-